Business vacates. He's going to come back before us to ask for the twenty, or will it automatically? It'll kick automatically in? revert back to the twenty, which is what he carried up until December thirty-first. I don't have a problem. Okay, and again, subject to any conditions. So he's working out of that space, also along where acting action is. As I understand, action EMS has the two bay doors with the ambulances in them, and then the front office. And uh, for an auto house is operating out of a smaller back office on the on the rear of the property, and and, and like I said, he has he has two cars right now, but he said he's not going to have more than ten. Seems kind of odd, but I guess I'll go with the inspector's recommendation. Okay, motion made and seconded for those items. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, would you like us to hold a bit and see if we can, or no, you're good fine. to go? Sure. You're right. I'm sure everybody's happy not being on TV. Oh, okay. You're right. on TV. Oh, oh. <laughs> you're just not going through my computer. I'm happy not to be on TV. I think it's always nice to have this kind of thing on camera. Mm -hmm. um, so just really quickly to just housekeeping, um, two of the items on there are for two folks who are not in attendance. Uh, one of them, uh, Dave Isaacson, mm -hmm. he's been a long time part-time officer with us for a while, uh, gave his resignation and just started his second uh, business and just does not have the time for it anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so he is resigning and um, we have a, an officer who has been a special with us since 2014 and has really put in a a great deal of effort, especially helping us out in our time of need when we were very short-handed, um, Nate Rabidou. Nate is actually a member of the Tri-College Police Department. He is not here because he is working, um, and I'm requesting that uh, you all vote to uh, uh, promote him up to the part-time ranks uh, from the special ranks. Uh, you want those done separately? It, it's completely up to you. I figured it's kind of housekeeping, so if you want to vote on those right now, we can motion accept the next. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, um, so the two folks you have on your right, um, in the middle is uh, Thomas Douglas. Uh, Tom is a resident of South Hadley and works for the South Hadley Police Department, uh, currently is a full-time dispatcher. Uh, his police experience includes uh, that he was a special police officer in South Hadley, uh, as well as uh, West Side, West Springfield Police Department. Um, he comes to us with all of the police and dispatch certifications needed to do both jobs. Uh, so he can uh, very quickly fall right into line and, and uh, he's cross-trained so he can do both, uh, both of our, uh, handle of the desk duties as well as patrol. Uh, and he can start our training program immediately. Uh, he comes very highly recommended from uh, supervisory staff of the South Hadley Police Department, including their chief. And, uh, he has uh, two brothers in law enforcement as well. I'd be recommending uh, Thomas Douglas to uh, be hired as a, a special police officer for us. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and uh, next to Tom on your far right is Casey Gilbert. Uh, Casey is also a resident of South Hadley. Uh, she graduated the Reserve Police Academy in June of 2017. She is an Airman First Class in the United States Air Force Reserve, where she uh, supervises medical administration. Uh, she ensures that her unit members are ready to deploy if needed. Uh, Casey also worked as an intern for the Granby Police Department, and she also comes very highly recommended from her supervisors. Her father is a police captain, so she has a bit of it in her blood. Uh, I will be recommending Kate Casey uh, to be hired as another one of our special police officers. So moved. We'll all in favor? Aye. 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 And finally, uh, on your left, um, 
I'm sure you'll remember Tom, uh, Tom Chabot. Tom uh, resides in Turner Falls, and as I said, I'm, I'm sure you probably remember the, the last time I, I gave his bio, but uh, Tom has been um, in our training program since November. Uh, he has excelled. He actually just finished yesterday. Our training supervisor just cleared him to begin working shifts yesterday, and he is already working one today. Um, Tom was one of the uh, few people that I can recall that actually quit his full-time employment so that he could train full-time and uh, complete our training program. So clearly he stood out to all of us. Um, he, uh, he, where, he, where he did resign was actually as a full-time police officer for GCC. And previous to that, uh, he was a police officer from Mount, Mount Holyoke College and Northfield Police Department. Uh, he was also a corrections officer at the Franklin County Jail. I am recommending uh, to you tonight to have Tom uh, fill our vacancy in our full-time ranks. So moved. Second. And I can personally attest to his excellent customer service skills. So, all in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have anything else for any questions on any of the other issues? Yeah. You do. You do? I do too. You do too. Okay. Just a quick one. Yes. You know where my my thoughts are with Narcan. Yeah. So who's incurring? I actually don't know what your thoughts are with Narcan. I don't know what your thoughts are with Narcan. Did you want to explain that? <laughs> <laughs> I am. My thoughts with Narcan and the policy is, is that the police department is now wanting to be responsible for carrying Narcan mm -hmm. and administrating it. Correct. Um, that's a drug that you give to people that have overdosed. Yeah. So um, in the past, we have not participated in this because of the cost mm -hmm. and um, reimbursement. So I would like just for you to run through that for me, how we're going to be reimbursed, who's going to be buying it, is it another part of your budget, or is there a program out there now that helps us do this? Door number three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it'll be free. Uh, we uh, so Nothing is free in Massachusetts. Well, it'll be free <laughs> for, for a time. Okay. Um, Several months ago, uh, we entered into a uh, grant program with uh, Hampshire Hope and the, the City of Northampton Health Department. Uh, Hampshire Hope is uh, a organization that has actually been working towards um, securing a $1.7 million grant, I believe, for every city and town in Hampshire County. Um, within that grant are two different there are two different facets of the grant. One of them is the actual Narcan. So um, each of our officers will be equipped with Narcan that they can carry either on their person or in a med bag. That will be covered by this grant. Um, as well as replenishment. <coughs> We're not sure how far the money is going to go, but it will include replenishment right up basically until the money runs out. And then the other half of it is what they call a mini grant. Uh, which, depending on the population size of your town, they have determined that each city or town will get a certain allotted slush fund amount um, to be used as they see fit so long as it meets the grant requirements. Training, education, other equipment, things like that. And our amount is actually 5000 which is one of the higher uh, amounts that they're allowing in Hampshire County because we actually, uh, according to the statistics that they're drawing, uh, we actually are one of the higher uh, towns that utilize Narcan as far as when AFD picks someone up and they have to dose someone. So for the time being... And it's just nasal, correct? We're, we actually haven't gotten our hands on them yet, so I'm not sure if it's the, uh, the, the nasal ones or if it's the, the new version that they just came out with. Um, but it's, yeah, it has, it's not injectable or anything like that. Yep, so that's so. my question. Yep. Well, there's a the tremendous cost. amount of money that's being Free spent charge. on the uh, opioids. opioids. I mean, yeah. it's just, I would hope that municipalities <coughs> would get some of that trickle down money for, for the Narcan. I mean, 
to try to save these people. I know there's a lot of money yeah. going into education, but it should go in there as well. Yeah, it seems like they're doing uh, they're doing a lot of both. Uh, but 1.7 million goes a long way when it comes to. Yeah, it does. It's expensive. expensive, isn't it? it, 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 well, it, it, it all Six hundred bucks a dose or something. Well, it depends it, on it, what it is because yeah, I think I gave life. you the cost. At one point, yeah, uh, I mean, EpiPens and things like that are actually more expensive oh, than yeah. Narcan, yeah. which is. But it's, it's got a shelf life of six months. Yeah. It's not very long, but then again, right. you use one or two or three or four, it depends on how many you have to use on that one yeah. individual. Well, you know, I mean, that's the yeah. other thing now is that yeah. everything's getting so much more potent mm -hmm. that you're not using one, you're no. using two or three or four, and then you have to replace them. So then you have to decide, actually. How much you're going to have the officers carry? Mm -hmm. There's, there's the, this interesting part about it is that one of my, uh, my, my training supervisor is actually um, the one that wrote the policy for this, based upon you know all the new standards that are out there. And there's two different doses that are out there. And now you have the, the one that you're supposed to split in half, one up each nostril, and then there's a new one that they came out with that you can inject right up one nostril. It's supposed to be double the dose. We're hoping that that's what they start to buy and that's what they issue, but we weren't, we didn't have the policy approved yet, so we haven't put our order in yet, so we don't know what we're going to get. Chief, I noticed about a week ago in the paper that there was, uh, somebody was appointed in uh, Western Massachusetts to a new position. Who was that, Jerry? I don't know. Do you know anything about that, Chief? <laughs> yes. Um, I was uh, I was nominated uh, as the second vice president for the Western Massachusetts Association. Very good. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. congratulations. Um, it's basically, you know, a lot more work for no money at all. <laughs> um, but uh, it's right uh, in our wheelhouse, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> our organization, you know, does a lot of good things. So it's something I wanted to get involved. In. Congratulations. Proud of you. Thank you. Very nice. Appreciate that. John, you said you had a question as well? Yeah, the Narcan is one, but the other one is, in general, on all your other uh, letters here for different items, mm -hmm. I might say, um, they all refer back to the Mass General Law. Mm -hmm. so why are we adopting the Mass General Law that we work under all the time anyway? You're talking about the policies that yes the, all, all, most for of our policies are right. Well, most of most police policies are based. Right out of Mass General okay. laws. Um, the are idea you is to the Mass General law with these or not? Nope. What we're doing is we're taking the policies and we're molding them. We're molding a very general idea of what the general what the Mass General law lays out and um, molding it to more fit our agency better. So That's we really have all these laws in effect right now. Every one of those policies that we put out, except for the Narcan, is an update. Okay. And what happens is is the Mass Chiefs General Counsel. They work through their way through these thousands upon thousands of policies each year, and they update them based upon case law changes and things like that. Okay. And then they ship them off to each police chief, and it's your choice whether or not to adopt them. But they're all accredited policies based on the law, uh, and we just kind of um, trim them down, so to speak, to fit us yeah. better. All right. That's it. Okay. I just had one other thing, and that's that I, w I was reviewing this as well, yeah. and I saw that um, we had gone and made some changes to the police, um, how it, um, they knew it now fell into a wheel if there was open vacancies that were there, mm -hmm. and I think we were talking about adopting that, or trying to get to adopt that in the dispatch office as well in the next contract negotiations. Mm -hmm. I, I see that's not what we're doing now, you're just kind of pointing out that based on the current contract that we have now, It'll continue as it is, but I think we're going to be looking at. I, I, I think we as a board, and I, don't, I think yeah. everybody knows that anyway, so we would be looking to see if we could do it a, a more fair way, like we did with the police department at some right. point down, down the road. Yeah, David I just and I have, that have touched on that already, and okay. it's certainly something as soon as you folks decide who the, uh, <coughs> who the teams are going to be as far as who's going to negotiate with who, mm -hmm. we'll just certainly okay. get down to those brass tacks. And do you, do you and I need to talk about anything that you've gotten any more information on what we were going to talk about? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So. I, 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 I don't know how Saturday. you want to do it because a lot of the stuff is, a lot of the, the things that we've done as far as impact bargaining are tied to mm -hmm. my FY19 budget. Mm -hmm. So if you would prefer that I go through David first to see if he thinks I'm out of my mind, uh, that way you don't have to bother reading it. <laughs> and if he says... Looks why good. Do, why don't I, are you in Saturday? Yep. 
so maybe I can touch base with you on that. That's fine. Yeah. I can just give you an idea, but I've been keeping David up to speed on the whole okay. thing. It's just there's a lot of, as with you know the last couple of changes that we made, there's just so many moving parts. I'm just trying to keep track of it all and make it all work at the oh, same time. Okay. Okay. And um, we're planning our, our next uh, select board meetings on the 17th, and David and I are planning on putting the executive session um, relative to collective bargaining on that agenda so we can discuss it this more fully. This seat's still going to be vacant, correct? Correct. That's until, until April. April. You're doing double duty then. That. Okay. All right, so we have a motion then? Yeah. To I'll make a motion to accept all of the policies presented to us. I will second that motion. Okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you very much. Thanks, guys. Stay warm. Thank you. Stay safe tomorrow. We'll try. Yeah. Yeah, don't go out into Okay. <laughs> We're beyond public comment and I'm pretty confident no one's here for that anyway. So we would go into uh, let's see we have rental agreement with Planville Farm. So the board asked me to um, continue the uh, the current uh, rental agreement uh, that formerly existed between Plainville Farm and the Hynoski family to uh, now extend it until August for agricultural use of the Hynoski property as well as use of the barn. Mm -hmm. The same terms and conditions basically uh, between Plainville Farm and the town of Hadley. Has Plainville Farm seen this? They have not. Okay. And ours has gone before this is okay with our lawyer? Yeah, they wrote it up. Okay. Uh, make a motion to present it to Plainville Farm. Second. Okay. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Uh, Jane, look, I see Jane in the back row. So we have uh, updates from the Senior Center and Library Construction Projects. Um, Senior Center and Library are meeting together to talk about the combined area where our properties will meet. It's, of course, all in flux at the moment because mm -hmm. we have plans, but the library doesn't. So we're sort of making up. Hmm, vague end over there on the west end of our property about what's going to really happen. Mm -hmm. Today we met with the architects and talked about parking lots and driveways and green spaces and what's required by the town and where we're going to put the snow when we have snow removal and mm -hmm. lighting. Yeah. Lighting well, and practical things. Practical things. And the other the other thing is the service entrance coming off Route Nine, which is going to cut into the um, parking lot. Mm -hmm. They're very familiar yeah. yeah. um, And how we're going to, you know, try and not take up their parking spaces because being good neighbors, we want to do that. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that we are on track to have an informal meeting with the planning board on the 6th of February. Mm -hmm. We thought it was in two weeks, but I went last night and they said, no, they're too busy. They'll see us in four weeks. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Good. Any questions for Jane? Yep, sounds good. Progressing along. Yeah, moving good. along. Well, we better hurry because I don't know if you knew that the boiler went again last week. In the, <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving, that boiler. Mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll do our best to keep it moving. We'll do. Okay, thank you. Um, and the library, there's nobody here from the library tonight, but I think that, um, again, there was a, a joint meeting between kind of a subset of the folks from the senior center and the <laughs> library. Uh, the data and I attended, and, and you know, again, a air of cooperation. The library is going to be just that much tag team behind you guys, but mm -hmm. so more to come on that front. <clears throat> I think the focus right now is also on um, fundraising. Okay. For them, yes. For them, yeah. Okay. Anything else from your standpoint? No. Okay. We're All very right. excited. It is. All right. Thanks, Jane. Um, I'm going to jump up to sewer skater because I'm assuming Marlo is going to need need to get a good night's sleep before the storm hits. So uh, we're going out to bid for the uh, SCADA <laughs> system. Uh, for people who don't know, SCADA stands for Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition. It's a way to remotely monitor and uh, in some cases control uh, sewer pumping stations as well as the uh, sewer treatment plant. Uh, this project was made possible by a $50,000 grant
from the Commonwealth uh, Cabinet, uh, Compact Cabinet. Thank you very much for your assistance in writing that grant. Thank you, Marlo, for just an enormous amount of work putting this uh, very complicated and technically difficult uh, uh, specification together and walking us through the whole project. We went out to bid, we received three bids. One bid is for um, uh, AMP Electrical Services, and the low bid is $134,000. We have a funding plan uh, for this. Uh, we have to get this project completed by June 30th, 2018, under the terms of the grant. Uh, so we, it feels like a lot of time, but it's not, so I make a recommendation that we award the SCADA project to AMP Electrical Services. So moved. <coughs> Second for discussion. Okay. Amp, discussion. Is, Amp is the one that also does all the uh, solar panels in town? Yes, they won the bid for the routine uh, uh, electrical maintenance contract for the town. And what, what is our diabolical plan to finish the financing on this? Uh, well, we have, we have money that was raised through the grant, $50,000. Yeah. yeah. Then we have $70,000, which was raised through a special town meeting vote back in October. Yeah. Uh, that came from the sewer impact fees. And then we have the remaining $14,000 will be coming out of the operational budget for FY18. Out of water? It's waste sewer. water. Waste water. Yeah. We have a facility maintenance line item that, that has, has done really well so far, six months into the budget. So I immediately figured we can handle this through our operating budget. I also would like to add that, you know, I put a lot of work into this, but uh, I want to thank John and, and the guys in the wastewater treatment plant uh, on their end too, because they put some time in and had input and, and whatnot. So it, it's still going to be a big undertaking. These are yeah. 1976 yeah. Uh, pump stations, so they're they're fairly old. Yeah. You may have you may hear the word mission. Mission is a form of SCADA, and the reason we're doing the mission system is because pump station one and four, when they were refurbished, redesigned, rebuilt, what have you, uh, mission system was installed in one and four. So uh, the guys seem pretty happy with it. John's been happy with it. So we decided to, to stick to the thing. As long as John's happy. I just say John's happy, we're happy. So. We, when does actually, Jerry get to be happy? <laughs> we decided to try this alarm system out when it was recommended by the com home company that uh, installed a new, two new pump stations. Mm -hmm. They were they were the bid with them, so mm -hmm. that's why we tried them to see how they were going to work out. Mm -hmm. They're pretty well. They 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 stay right with it. They've updated it. I don't know, probably two or three times already in the past two years. So yeah. all the updates are free. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all the, the updates are free. It's, it, it's a fee to run the program, but mm -hmm. they they stay right on top of it. They do a really good job of it. And, and, and so, just so we know, there is a fee for each station. It's cloud-based. Um, there's a good possibility we're going to offset the actual physical phone lines to each of the buildings, which is going to offset the fee for the cloud. So, uh, it's pretty much a wash. I know the figures with me, but I remember going through it with John and Hayes Pump. But uh, I think it's a, a really good thing. 21st century, huh? Yeah. We're trying. <laughs> okay. So, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Upstain. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Land Grant, Old Ferry Road off of River Drive. This is a, a project that has been uh, under review by the Conservation Commission. It was brought to the Select Board back in uh, August 2016. And it's a transfer of uh, 1.8 acres of wooded land formerly uh, the Old Ferry Road in North Hadley over to the Conservation Commission for their uh, as conservation land. So the, uh, the only thing remaining in this project is to have the select board vote to uh, uh, um, make that conveyance to the Conservation Commission. Based on the recommendation of the Conservation Commission, I will vote that we approve this. Is there a second? Second. Uh, any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, North Hadley Village Hall sale. David, I believe you put this on 
At the request of the board. At the request of the board, the, the, this came up uh, apparently uh, from the municipal building committee that they're interested in moving forward with this project again. So I, uh, at the request of the board, I put together the the updated RFP for selling the, the property. Property is uh, valued at in excess of four hundred thousand dollars for the building and the land. Um, we have to go out the bid again. Uh, check with council. There's a, there's a clear path for doing that. Um, but we don't need to go back to town meeting. You don't have to go back to town meeting. I was wrong about that. Part. Okay, but okay. but all we have to do is because it's it's expired. There's a timeline on it. It's been expired, so mm -hmm. we need to go out to bid again. You have to go out to bid. All right. So moved. Yeah, because didn't we have 90 days on it or something originally? I think. Well, we extended that. Yeah. You extended that, but and then passed. second for discussion. Basically, yeah. basic, basically, the deal fell apart. And now we have to try it again if we're going to go this direction. We made a lot of mistakes with it the first time, and I just want to make sure not mistakes. A lot of things came up along the way mm -hmm. the first time. Let's be positive about this. It's a learning process. It was a learning process as to what the exterior of the building was going to be able to look like, what the actual planning board said that was going to be able to go there. Mm -hmm. There was a meeting in North Hadley regarding the friends and neighbors mm -hmm. uh, up there. Um, and, and everybody had different expectations and then we, we put the historical we put the brakes on this because we were hoping that possibly it could be used for the uh, land up there for the um, uh, substation. fire station substation yeah. okay so I'm assuming that everything that we have learned in the process has been addressed now in this as to whether or not the ball field can be sold can the ball field be sold the ball field can be sold, but can it be converted into something other than a ball field? That that is a stickier question. We can so. My recommendation is that we sell the property as is and make no representation over its future use. But the whole piece. The whole piece. And what about the access rights to the pond that came up? Well, there's access already. There's a access at the boat ramp. Yeah, no. I mean, I don't know how many accesses you need to that pond. Well, there there were people that were hoping to have. Well, you know, on the other side. It, there's a lot of hopes here. We want to get rid of I the damn property. I am really articulating <coughs> concerns. You know, I mean, that are it's, it's overdue, long overdue. I, I couldn't agree with you more, yeah. but if I don't want to do this. Well, again. I don't even like some of the things in these things that are written here, but I'm going along with it. I don't, I don't see the point of the historical commission going in and reviewing. Um, examining the piece of property from time to time when they feel the need to do that. I mean, there's a lot of things in here that just don't jive with me, but I'm willing to just, let's just get rid of the piece of property and make everybody happy. Well, here, here's another thing that I think there was a concern or, or a concern about how the process went last time um, has to do with the, the fire trucks that are there right now. Mm -hmm. So if, if Right now, that project's on hold. We've secured the land for the Hynoski property, but we've also talked about making sure that we have fully vet the bigger picture of the fire department. Mm -hmm. So if we push this out right now, then we're starting that meter running again about needing to get those trucks out of there, potentially. So. Unless there's a caveat on there that the trucks to be maintained at the I, I, I know that the one of the people that was looking in the purchasing of that um, was willing to allow the trucks to stay there again. But that, is that in writing? Though? I didn't see. I, mean, I might have missed it if that's in. That's not in here, is it? The how long the trucks can stay there is part of the evaluation criteria for anybody submitting a proposal. You know. For us to determine. I, I, okay. I, I, I right, so it's no, not an actual. No, no, no. To your point, how long is it going to be there? Mm -hmm. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Are we going to get on a fire substation in a year or not? Don't know. Right, and, and so it seems like this should be part of that bigger plan. What I would, what I would recommend is, is that we now shop this around and show it to the various affected departments, historical, municipal building committee, and fire department. Uh, I think we're just saying let's start the process. We have an all boards meeting next week. If we could make this an agenda possible sure. item for the all boards meeting, get this to the people in advance, and if they have any questions or um, any um, logical means for us to pr pursue here, 
um, I think it would be everybody in the same room sitting talking about the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and we could all pull in the same direction this time. And to save a little time, anybody that's watching that's interested in this, all this is public content on this mm -hmm. in the consent agenda. So mm -hmm. it's all here so everybody can read it. Call all your select board members with your opinions. <laughs> it's not in the consent agenda. Though. Yes, yes, just yes. the regulars. Uh, I mean in the uh, uh, board board item seven agenda. Point. Yeah. yeah. So that that's just my point. I, I absolutely I agree with you, Joyce, 100. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that brought it forward because the building municipal buildings committee said let's get this done. Mm -hmm. It's another item that's on their list, and they'd like to have this accomplished as I'm sure all of us would like to have this yeah. And if too. we have to look for alternative housing for those um, fire trucks, then we can look for some type of alternative housing. So are we voting tonight then to put the RFP out, or are we just taking it under advisement subject to the conversation that happens at the all boards meeting, and then we'll vote on it? In my humble opinion, I would like to see this come up as an agenda item at the all boards meeting. Uh, for feedback from the other board so that we can yeah, we'll at least voice at least voice our opinion as to what we're doing how we're trying to get it done and again many of these other committees that have been involved with the process already can can you know we'll all be in the same room let's talk about it okay so we don't need a motion then we just need to right that happen. Uh, i'll take that as an instruction okay. jane do you have a question <coughs> yes is the um original buyer still interested yes There were two bidders on that project. I think they're both still interested. Okay, the church and the individual. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's plan. Very good. <laughs> Annual town meeting, Morris. Hey Joyce, we can sprinkle the tobacco barn and put the trucks in there okay. that we own it. Yes, we could. See that? I was thinking that. <laughs> John. Just rented it out. Oh, yeah, that's right. right. Only till the end of August. <laughs> Uh, so we have a town meeting coming up <coughs> on May 3rd, first Thursday in April, in May rather, uh, and I recommend that we open the warrant tonight with uh, the due date of uh, February 14th as a closing time at 4 p.m. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, do we want to, where do we want to talk about uh, kind of a quick budget update? And here or in the next one? Next month? Uh, you can do Is it, it here or news? the next issue. Mm -hmm. Oh, for the all boards meeting? Okay. Yeah, which, why don't yeah. bring it up now? Okay. Well, I was just thinking, um, so at the last select board meeting, we talked about having a, a group from the financial management team meet to start having some conversation. Um, so we did that so there's representative from the finance committee, select board, David, um, the town treasurer. We had a meeting just just on uh, two, I was say Monday, Tuesday. It was Monday. It was Monday, yeah. No, Monday is a holiday. Monday, New Year's Eve. It was Tuesday. Right, Tuesday. Sorry. That's what we had. Tuesday. Right. Sorry. So just, yeah, yeah. Today's Wednesday. Beginning of the week. How time flies. <laughs> so um, we met and took a first pass at really more of a conversation about an approach. Uh, and found ourselves talking an awful lot about revenues um, and the fact that you know, there's still a, a strong sense, I think, that some of these revenue line items haven't been fully, we haven't fully pushed um, and that there should be more opportunity above and beyond the 387,000, I think is the number that David had come up with. But um, so, want to do some more exploration there and that was communicated to the department heads today at the meeting um, and there were specific examples given and I don't, you know so we're undervaluing things that we think are going to come in higher or there's opportunities for that we're not currently there may be opportunities for revenues that are not currently being collected okay um, so and as well as your first point is that we may be undercharging for the services that we provide and there's also the enforcement part of it, which is we now have the ability to deny a permit if somebody owes it, uh, money in another department. Mm -hmm. So by, by well, no... We've had that right along. 
You've had that right yeah, along, but we've been able to enhance it under the Municipal Modernization Act. Mm -hmm. And that was something that was passed, I want to say it was about half a year ago, maybe a little bit more than that. So I just reminded the departments that we don't have to go by the old rules, which required you to wait for an entire year uh, mm -hmm. before enforcing, uh, you know, withholding or revoking a permit. Mm -hmm. Now you can do it as soon as somebody is not in good standing regardless of what that looks like. Mm -hmm. Whether they owe $75 for a sewer uh, grease trap inspection uh, or taxes downstairs or the check for the liquor license bounced. You know, for any of those reasons, we can deny licenses of many different stripes. Mm -hmm. All due respect, is there much of that that's available to us? Is there a lot of things that we have um, Peter and Paul not on the same page with? I think it was a bigger problem a year ago with, with the, the new, uh, the new uh, ability to enforce that uh, we're doing a better job. But I just wanted to reinforce that with the department. <coughs> and remember, we have this tool. We've been working to make these tools available to them so that we don't have to socialize bad behavior. I think I saw a letter that said that our tax collection last year was as fine as it's ever been mm -hmm. and as timely as it's ever been, which, you know, congratulations to Susan and everybody involved with that, and hats off to them. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, again, I think the, the idea was that, you know, we can certainly focus on um, the expense reduction if we're trying to find room in the budget, but $45,000, $55,000 on the revenue side, it's still worth committing some effort there, and especially if there's some new revenue sources found, those are going to carry over year over year. So, um, so that was one area that we spent a fair amount of time talking about. And then on the expense side, in terms of um, how to approach the department heads, I think we talked about uh, different ways that we've approached it, either in the past or other people are aware of, which include, okay, everybody, you know, 5% reduction across the board and, and are all in agreement that, that that approach really doesn't doesn't seem to be one that's going to work for us right now. But um, one that we think is worth exploring. And, and again, there were some particular areas of, of interest, I'll call it that, that we kind of pointed out that we want to do more exploration on. You know, David's got some homework certainly coming out of the meeting to dig into some numbers with Justin. But what about the opportunity to have um, some logical departments coming together because when you when you think about it in the if you take just the silo approach and you say to one department okay you need to squeeze out a few thousand dollars they may only have like four line items in their budget and and we've done that year over year and those departments are kind of at a point where there's not a whole lot more that they can do um, but if some departments can come together, they may collectively find a way of either sharing some services across, like, uh, Admin. whether it's administrative, whether it's programming, whether it's through purchasing, where, you know, a good example was a couple of years back, the two chiefs came together and realized that they had these two <coughs> cell phone contracts, and if they just put them together, they could save a fair amount of money just on something like that. So, the Part of the thought process was more a collaborative team approach, um, and wanted to run it run it by you all tonight before we went too far down the road with that. But if you think about public safety, you know, can Mike and Mike put their heads together? Marlo may be an island unto himself, and he's sitting in the room here, so I'm not going to look at Marlo. <laughs> okay, look at Marlo. DPW may have to. But, but he um, runs three departments already, right, Marlo? Right. But the town, the town hall, collectively, you know, getting together and figuring out ways to save, whether it's supplies, whether it's you know, the fax lines, things of so the technology that um, it was just pointed out in a previous conversation. Sometimes there's technology that can more than, even though it costs something, you're eliminating a a, a cost so, somewhere else in the budget. You know, so. Um, we thought that that would be a good approach to encourage, um, you know, we're thinking in terms of, when you think about the book that David put together, you know, where you have all of town halls, so you've got a select board and then all of the 
the town hall departments, and then you have culture, recreation, and human services. Human services, you know, those like groups, and ask them to come together and start looking at their budgets and see what they might be able to do collaboratively. You know, the, the planning board is still their their own. You know, it, it's hard to how, how would you ever combine them with anybody? It's like the DPW. You know, they're separate and and the individual, you know, they're unique in their own way. I don't think it's for everybody. I think she's just, I think yeah. was just pointing out that some departments may yeah. not all. Mm -hmm. well, for those that plan, they could probably put their heads together, whether it be um, involving the building committee for planning as well, you know, because mm -hmm. there's so many different areas there. And, um, well, and I, I think the idea is to create some sort of, and Center. I mean, Long it's range planning committee. Yeah. another one. You know, that's already part of it anyway with the mm -hmm. planning board. And they're doing they're doing a lot with the planning board now. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that they that they've been eliminated. No, through Pioneer Valley. Pioneer yeah. Valley. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Planning commission. Yes. Have we explored those kind of opportunities with the school? Talking about like shared admin technology, co-op purchasing. We've been talking about yeah. it for a year. Yeah, and more. Uh, more. Yeah, and Annie uh, at a uh, couple of department head meetings and stuff have said that she's on board with that. That, but I, I, I get the sense that they're looking for um, the call to come to them, you know, to say this is what we're thinking. I could be wrong, but I, I get that sense. So, so I definitely. Think HR though, they were they were all in all on board for an mm -hmm. HR person. I think mm -hmm. the school committee was here actually talking mm -hmm. about that. Yeah, and again, the only thing that we can deal with from the town budget is the funding of the school line item. So, you know, one of the homework items that David's back to looking into does it make sense to establish some sort of special ed stabilization fund. And there are arguments on both sides of that. Now may be a more appropriate time to do it than when we tried to have that conversation a few years back because we're in a different set of circumstances. So, definitely, the school's. They're, they're a pretty big part of the, the big pie. So, so you are you guys okay with that approach? Sure. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll stay the course, and we have another meeting set for Monday. Monday. Yeah, we'll be meeting again next Monday and continuing the conversation, and hopefully we'll have something you know more more concrete to be bringing back thereafter. Okay. okay, and then um, so the all boards meeting <coughs> is scheduled for January 9th. Next uh, week. Start is that seven o'clock start? I thought it was earlier. But it's That's seven. A seven o'clock. Okay, seven o'clock, and it's at Hopkins, Hopkins Academy. Academy. In the cafeteria. Uh, I don't have that detail. Okay. okay. You'll you'll find it. So the the primary focus. <laughs> <laughs> the primary focus for the all boards meeting um, was an opportunity for the planning board to um, summarize in however, whatever manner they want to, the update to the master plan. So I would encourage everybody to read it in advance of that meeting, but uh, this is an opportunity again for them to hit the highlights and get people focused on the areas that uh, they plan on marching forward with and also gives people context as we're moving forward with our budgets and planning was where, where things may be headed. And then uh, North they had Bradley a, Hall. Yeah, they had a conversation last night regarding um, this particular issue. I was watching the planning board meeting last night and um, their comments uh, were that not a single comment came up from a taxpayer in the town of Hadley to regarding anything with the long range plan. And they were like, well, we, we, you know, nobody has inquired about it, nobody's asked about it, nobody's made, uh, pointed out any opportunities. So maybe this is a, a chance for, for people to get their message heard if they have any messages. If not, just to, to hear how the long range plan has changed and it's an evolving creature. I was on the committee the first time when it came out and I know that it was very, everybody was very vocal with, you know, they had their ability to fill out the, the uh, forms on it and get their information in it. Maybe they felt that was their, their venue in order to be able to communicate what they'd like done. Um, 
so now I'm, I mean I haven't actually perused it too specifically myself but I certainly will be doing that before next week and mm -hmm. um, I, I, I use the first one as kind of a guide kind of in all my decision making whether I was here or whatever I was doing on any board that I was on in the town uh, because I think that people had the opportunity to speak out and get us information as to where we should be at yep. and I think our responsibility is to do what the people want to do mm -hmm. so even if you know hopefully the planning board will have a nice presentation that night and be able to pass some of that along and then maybe we can get some feedback I'm sure it's going to be taped right uh, John Good. sorry going to be taped all, all boards meeting on Tuesday. I am recording that. Yeah. Excellent. Broadcasting that. Yes. Okay. I'm the guy. Okay. Who's out of town, so I'm I'm alone. Gotcha. But it will be escaped. Okay. So hopefully we can maybe get some feedback even for people that were watching it on TV versus the people that that are going to be there. And again, for anybody that hasn't looked at the master plan, it is in this agenda for this meeting. And it's also posted it's on the posted. planning board website. And it's also yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Jake? Several months ago, we <coughs> talked about this January 9th meeting as being also an, not also, as being an opportunity to um, talk about the volunteer positions that occur in town. Mm -hmm. Is that going to happen? Well, yeah. I mean, we could, we, had, we talked about a couple of things there. One of the things we talked about was having some sort of actual kind of fair where people could come and learn more about it. And I don't think that that's been pulled together very, you know, we haven't really pursued that. So we may have to do that at a, at a different time. It may be an opportunity, though, to point out, as Jane probably is, is indicating, mm -hmm. that some of these departments that will be represented there that have vacancies will be able to express what the time commitment is right. and, and in some way be able to kind of tell everybody what's, what, the, what, what the job entails. Um, and once that gets done, hopefully, you know, maybe it's an opportunity for to find some volunteers, as you said. And is there a final plan for the tax write-off for seniors and veterans yet? Uh, we should be rolling that out this month. Yeah. Okay. So if it rolls out this month, is there enough time for them to get in their hours and still deduct it? Because it's the last two months of the calendar year right so if it doesn't go out until this month they can't apply it it'll have to be a whole year around the cycle unless you somehow modify that part of the system I mean we'll, we'll certainly make it work one way or the other um, but uh, it's one of the reasons why we chose to roll it out in January was because of that issue and we wanted to make sure that the, the work aligned with both the, the federal income tax year as well as the, uh, the at least half of the uh, Had Hadley tax year. Okay. Anything else on that? Nope. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Okay. Are we going to be getting agendas or will there be a pre-posted agenda for the all boards meeting? Uh, the select board will be posted as a, as a uh, as a meeting, a formal meeting, and that we will certainly get a chance to talk to anybody else. Be safe tomorrow, right, everybody. Thank you for your work there, Marlo. Marlo. And we'll be able to get that information to the um, all boards that will be joining us? Yes, and we have to post that on Friday, because Monday, uh, Monday's not a holiday, but, mm -hmm. but, but we, it's we, Tuesday. Do, we still have, right, we're meeting on Tuesday, we still have to post on Friday. Mm -hmm and everybody else that needs to post it. There's going to be uh, uh, many members from their boards. Right. They have to post by Friday. Okay. And is there an item that came up for the agenda that was unforeseen that I'm forgetting? Yes. Thank you for <laughs> reminding me. Um, we applied a while ago for the uh, flat grant flat. for Moody Bridge Road for $226,000. We waited around for months for federal government to send us an agreement they finally did with a very short turnaround uh, so we can't wait until your next meeting uh, so if you would authorize the chair to sign the flat grant once we've completed all the forms that they've asked for so it's just for the, the benefit of the people watching yeah. on TV explain what we're doing where we're doing it and that type of stuff if we can yeah. Road. 
-hmm. Yeah, so it's a Moody Bridge Road. It's the, uh, the gravel portion of that road next to the Silvio Conti Wildlife Refuge. FLAP stands for Federal Lands uh, Access Program, and it's to help to make federal park lands accessible to everybody who, regardless of their abilities. A uh, portion of uh, Moody Bridge Road will be uh, paved. Uh, the amount of the grant is uh, $226,000 with an in-kind match. Do you know how much of it is going to be paved? Uh, we put it into the grant program. We're right paved to Harushchak's now, right? Yeah. Uh, just from Silvio County's driveway uh, east to this wherever the tar exists. Yeah, 3,000 feet. It's going to be completely tar. Yeah. yeah. 3,000 3, feet. Yeah. Linear feet. And they're looking to have it done by uh, August. <coughs> August, September, October, roughly, construction. Yeah. We, we plow that down. down. <laughs> they, want, they want to get it done before the federal, gravel, yeah, right federal year is up. We still plow it down. Yeah. What specs is this built to? I'm sorry? Is this built to a town spec or is it built to a state spec when we're using flat money? Federal. I believe it federal has to it has to be approved. Program funding. And I think so it has to be approved by the uh, Massachusetts Department of Transportation yeah, and the town of Hadley. So, so they're putting tar down? No. Sorry. Stone oil. It is stone oil? Yeah. Okay. It, it says right in here. Yeah, this started, remember when the guy came in? I do. Back when Mike Komoski was here, and then Marlon yeah. came back with it? Yeah. We applied for this grant, what, twice or three times already? And they did. Just, they did, and it just finally got approved now. Well, I know that people that lived down there weren't too happy about having any paved road down there because of the increase in traffic that happens when, when you do those kind of things, and as it is now. You know, they got a little break in the action when the bridge went out. Yeah, and, I know. And, uh, you know, then it becomes a throughway again for people cut through. Well, thanks for thanks for helping with the update with that, and I make a motion that we approve the flat <laughs> ramp. Yeah. Is there a second? Oh, wow. Johnson, yeah. Look at that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Upstain. <laughs> you can say yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. <coughs> All right, then I think that covers all the business for the evening. David, is there anything else we need to know that we haven't talked about before we do executive session? Uh, no, other than to wish everybody a happy new year. Happy new year to everybody. And be safe tomorrow. Stay off the roads if you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if Ms. Gabriel has anything for us. Oh, yeah. So um, still new to the world of memos. <laughs> So after our last finance committee meeting, uh, we just wanted to better communicate like where we were at for those of you who weren't watching. Mm -hmm. Do you guys actually all typically watch those? Not sure. I actually do. It's not until it's later. We just Repeated. got this this evening. Right. We just were able to yeah, um, yeah. Be so. able to scan it a little bit, but it looks, mm -hmm. yeah, looks so like we're all Take your time reading page. it. Exactly. Yeah. No, we're actually not meeting tomorrow, so if you have any more feedback on it, there will be plenty okay. of time for our all-board meeting. Okay. And uh, yeah, just to quickly summarize, it's an overview how we view the budgeting process moving forward. And like you said, I think we're all on the same page. Yep. So, cool. Just want Sounds to good. Thank you, Gabe. Get our communication down in writing a little more so we can refer back to it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. No problem. All righty. Any careful. announcements tonight? Mm, not tonight. No. I don't have a Jerry guy. Nothing? Okay. John, did you want to announce how our tax rate is so preferable to the, our neighbors to both sides? No, no, okay, good. Just no, it's it. not low enough, actually. I don't need to read that. Would you like to oh. read it? <coughs> the audience? <laughs> well, I was, sure, I, I just was, I noticed in the newspaper the other day how the taxes, and I know everybody talks about tax rates, and I know everybody's tax bill went up, but the tax rates and the property values and how people say that, it's such a big difference and the game gets played with whether you've got 100% valuation or not 100% valuation. But posted in uh, Wednesday, December 27th papers was uh, the tax rates for uh, bordering communities. And I'm not going to talk about Amherst or Northampton. They're different. They're city-type applications. But a town of South Hadley, um, the average annual tax payment is $4,300.
Uh, the town of Belchertown is $4,700. The town of Granby is $4,900. And Hadley is still uh, at about $1,200 less or about 25% less uh, tax bill than what our neighboring like communities are. So I know we get kind of pounded a lot of times, and I know everybody's tax bill did go up, but we're actually doing the best we can, and the numbers kind of prove it out. You don't plan on moving out of town, are you? I just bought another house in town, John. It's oh, so good. Geez. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> is there a motion to adjourn? There is. No. There is oh no! I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. Make a That's motion the other to one. go into executive session. Executive session. The select board will. Is that you that got to say that? We're going into executive session for uh, bargaining and litigation. Not to reconvene an open session. And don't we have to indicate? The you, have to to the, you have to give your formal statement. You have to. Yeah, uh, okay. Um, so, this chair of the select board. Um, I determine that it's <laughs> in the best interest. It's in the, the best town. interest of, uh, well, it would not be in the best interest of the town to have this discussion in open session. Um, therefore, we're moving into executive session. Is there a second? Second. Did I, I, no, I made the made motion. The motion. <laughs> I, I can do a second. Second. <laughs> roll call vote. Roll call vote. Yes. Yes. Keegan. Yes. 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 We're in executive session, folks. Yes. Good night. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night. We shouldn't be long. I'm <laughs>